Look, I, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm sorry to anybody, but I am sorry for being repetitive. I am and I'm not. I'm sorry for being repetitive and following a chain of events that I've married my ideology to because I do believe it is the most important thing. And yes, their economy is in trouble. In a mysterious twist, CEOs of major companies are rapidly offloading stocks, prompting Andy Schechtman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metal Investments, to question the ominous signs. Despite an eerily quiet precious metal market, Sheckman detects a potential storm brewing, linked to de-dollarization and the precarious U.S. debt situation. Wealthy entities are discreetly securing physical precious metals. Could this be the calm before a financial tempest? Let's listen to Andy now. I think when we realize that there are 200 meetings between today and the in October meeting in Russia, 200 BRICS meetings, separate BRICS meetings, that's like every other day. Um, and then the big one in October and an election in November. Do we really think that this is going to be smooth sailing? And what's really eerie to me is the quietness in this retail market where we got hammered over the last few years, let's call it the front edge of the hurricane, and we are squarely in the center of it now, the eye, and it's quiet. We've done some very large deals lately, but the volume is, is substantially off from what it has been the last several years in normally sized deals. And I don't know if that's dumb luck or maybe there are sophisticated people out there who see some things coming. And I use sophisticated not in terms of the word the way we always expect it to mean. I use it in terms of sophisticated in terms of macro events. And or let's just say, well, uh, people who understand where we are. And, and there have been some inordinately large deals that we've done, but the volume is way off and it, it's eerie. It's quiet. And when you look at what's happening on the wholesale level, when you look at what's happening in Shanghai and the LBMA and COMEX, the ETFs, all bleeding off product, it makes me wonder, you know, um, how many people really understand what's coming at them. And and I, I have this narrative that I continue to talk about that I see accelerating faster and faster and faster. Let's talk about a few of them <clears throat> and and add it to what we talk about week after week after week. And again... Look, I, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm sorry to anybody, but I am sorry for being repetitive. I am and I'm not. I'm sorry for being repetitive and following a chain of events that I've married my ideology to because I do believe it is the most important thing. And although there are external factors that we should talk about and I try and touch on them, most of the periphery is noise to me. It's the big picture that matters. And the de-dollarization that we continue to see to me is very alarming. We talked about how the United Arab Emirates made the provocative move of saying they're not going to trade in dollars. When that materializes, I'm not quite sure. And we talked about how they are the seventh largest producer of oil in the world, and they are an OPEC member that was just admitted to BRICS here January 1st. Uh, they just, yesterday, the day before, completed the first ever digital transaction made directly to China through the M-Bridge platform. We've talked about the M-Bridge plat platform for over a year um, and that Embridge platform, think of it as a bridge that allows central bank digital currencies to trade with one another outside of the SWIFT system. Now, do you think there's any coincidence to countries wanting to be able to transact with one another outside the SWIFT system? I don't. This is how all of the countries are sanctioned. When the West imposes sanctions, they are locked out of the SWIFT system, which is the oxygen, if you will, to be able to transmit money from entity to entity, and these countries are hell-bent on finding a way to transact their own currencies, their local currencies, outside of the SWIFT system. This is the first ever transaction made directly to China from the United Arab Emirates, who just said they're not going to take dollars anymore, who was just visited by Putin right after they made that announcement, who hasn't left the country but twice in two years because of the sanctions. You can see things in every corner, if you look closely enough, are accelerating. But when you talk about metals store traded on the LME, um, this has been a very strategic aim of Hong Kong and of China to, to control all of the world's commodities. I believe that this is something they have done methodically and they are working on. And all of the relationships they're working on, like with the United Arab Emirates, center around trading in local currencies, ultimately maybe in a BRICS currency, but has to do with commodities. They bought the London Metals Exchange, and now they're going to be warehousing metals that are trading on the LME 
in China. Little by little by little by little logarithmic decay, the infrastructure as being is being put into place. Yeah, we've raised the debt ceiling, I don't know, like 79 times and some crazy number like that. And and you know, the way that that we continue to do this, it it, it is something that I, you know, obviously isn't lost on the world, but look, you know, when we talk about inflation moving forward, first of all, the Shanghai shipping costs just spiked 400% from 1,000 to 5,000. In other words, to to bring goods from China to the United States, now they have to go around the Cape of Good Hope. They're not going through the, the Suez Canal. And, and it, it's a situation where um, we are witnessing the cost of, of shipping go way, way higher. Well, go back to 2020 during the pandemic. What was the cause of all the price inflation? It was shipping. It was logistics. It was the supply chain. Supply chain problems are just getting started again and look, if the Fed cuts rates, which they may do here in the next day or two, it will be blatantly clear to me that the Federal Reserve is maybe the most political Federal Reserve ever. Because, look, a nation with $34 trillion in debt, uh, almost $200 trillion in liabilities, $500 billion in trade deficits, and a, and a trillion in, in interest payments, cutting rates when they're double their target, they're closer to 4% than they are to two, this is a problem. And and inflation is not going away. In fact, I would argue that inflation uh, will be a very big problem moving forward. And I think that's something people kind of have, have lost sight of. Um, this is something that, again, all of these things, I think, come back to why you're seeing de-dollarization, why you're seeing all of these things happen around us, there there are rallying cries everywhere. And, you know, and, and just to show the idiocy of the market, you know, the Treasury says, well, we're only going to borrow $760 billion in, in, instead of, you know, $55 billion higher than they or lower than they had expected. And so the market throws a party. I mean, think of how absurd that is. We're only borrowing $760 uh, and, you know, it's below what Wall Street thought. It's below what the street thought. And this is largely due supposedly to higher net fiscal flows. That's taxes. Right. So they think that um, there'll be higher ta the taxes will will make up for the loss of or, or the, the the less amount that they need to borrow or bonds that they need to issue. And my guess is, is that just like they did with the labor numbers, remember, 2023, all we heard about how good the employment numbers were. Well, quietly, hey, by the way, we were 440,000 jobs off, 40%. Sorry, but you don't really hear them yelling from, and you keep hearing all these pundits say, well, the employment numbers are so great and inflation is so great. We're being lied to everywhere. So the lying with the employment numbers, I mean, if you look, look at the number of CEOs that are selling everything. Uh, Look at the the CFO of Discover Card just sold all his stock. Look at uh, the the um, look at what's his name Jeff Bezos just sold I don't know a lot of stock a billion dollars worth. Look at uh, what's his name Zuckerberg from Facebook he's selling a bunch. Why are all of these Why are they all selling What do they know is coming? And and so the numbers that we're being told I believe are make believe and they are I think putting us into a position where I believe. They will come back and revise all of these numbers. They will revise and they'll end up borrowing more in the second quarter. And and everything gets revised and everyone is acting upon the news of the day. But you look at the way the BRICS are doing things in a very methodical, drawn out, plotted fashion. And that's that's why I think when things finally do snap, this is why I talk about logarithmic decay. All of these things that we talk about in and of themselves, they have significance and meaning, but put it together to a bigger whole, to, to the possibility of countries just seriously tired of the way that the United States conducts itself um, on the world stage and, and the way that we are mismanaging the reserve currency, the way that we are living beyond our means, and, and, and how hypocritical the world views us to be. And these are the rallying cries that are are bringing all of these countries into the fold. And I, I just think this is kind of why I continue down this path. 
Uh, just a couple other things, I guess, uh, worth talking about. Let's see here. Um, other than really uh, the you know the gold and silver commitment of traders, that's something I really just glance at once in a while. I guess I would just simply say gold right now is at 226 percent in terms of um, uh, percentage of of ounces versus bars in circulation or or backing the the contracts. It's 226% uh, of all vaulted gold, 499% of registered gold. In other words, five times as many contracts as there are bars uh, in the vault backing those contracts. And when you talk about silver, it's up to 1,642% of all registered silver. Again, it was at about 1,590%. Now it's 1,642. Basically, one out of every 17 contracts is backed. The rest is rehypothecated. So this entire system that is is over leveraged, whether you're talking the commodity exchanges, and do you think there's any re reason why the Chinese bought the LME and are now are going to be listing things trading on the Shanghai Exchange and listing and holding actual metals, vaulting them for the LME? You can begin to see how methodical they really are. Little by little by little, they are all over the place. And yes, their economy is in trouble. But they have set up an infrastructure that I believe will be able to weather even the worst economic calamity because they are so resource rich and they have made deals around the world for the continuation of accumulation of resources, of precious metals, and they're breaking, breaking away from the West. So everyone is in trouble right now financially. All of the countries are, are not in the best position. But in the end, as old Tam Pozar says, the ones who have all the commodities win. He who has the gold makes the rules, and that's kind of the the it's kind of the direction that I take everything that I take in nowadays, done again, and I try and look at it from a holistic point of view. But whether we're talking across the globe or here at home, where things just just keep on getting crazier and crazier and crazier, like at the border, I ask myself, when is that moment? When is that moment when things really become real? And the calm before the storm right now has everyone thinking that the worst is behind us, that we got through it and everything's going to be OK. Yet the way that I look at things, it, it may be more precarious than it's ever been on every front. So that's really all the news that I have to talk about. I don't know if you have any comments or questions. As the enigma surrounding CEO's massive stock sell offs deepens, Andy Schechtman, CEO of Miles Franklin Precious Metal Investments, leaves us pondering the ominous signals and potential storm on the financial horizon. In the tranquility of the precious metal markets, a hidden narrative emerges. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mysteries behind market trends, economic shifts, and the ever-evolving world of finance.